Good morning. I'm not used to so much power behind my voice. Wow. Um, welcome to worship this morning, this day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We are so glad that you are here with us in person and joining us at St. Paul Online. Please, as always, take time to look at our weekly email on the church's website for the most up-to-date information on things. Um, in the life of community, we're having a new member gathering on April 24th at 6.30 p.m. If you are wanting to join St. Paul officially, please fill out our new member form on the website or the link in the newsletter, and we will have a reception for all new members on Sunday, the 28th. Also, we... Um, have you seen the colorful envelopes in the narthex on your way in this morning? Many of our youth are traveling to New Orleans this summer for the youth gathering. This exciting, fun, and faithful formative trip is looking to help for help to complete the raising of funds to make the trip happen. We ask you to prayerfully consider a gift to help our youth if you can in any way. And finally, if you are not signed up for our weekly newsletter, you can sign up for it on our website or call the church office and we'll add you to the list. And on a different note, um, to some unfamiliar faces, my name is Travis Borkowski and I'm a member here and I'm grateful to be able to fill in for Pastor John when he's not in the office. So um, I'm glad that you're here today. Um, I invite you to... Uh, if I ask you a question during the sermon, respond. <laughs> I know, but Luther said to sin boldly. So we're going to try something a little different this morning and trust that the Spirit is at work. Unless there are any other announcements, um, let us turn our attention towards God as we prepare our hearts and our minds for worship and we continue with our confession and forgiveness. We gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, 
that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and in the presence of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have left done and what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by Christ's authority, I therefore declare to you the of all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, with joy we celebrate the day of our Lord's resurrection. By the grace of Christ among us, enable us to show the power of the resurrection in all that we say and do. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Good 
Good morning. Um, first reading is from Acts. Peter addressed the people, you Israelites, why do you wonder at this or why do you stare at us? As though by our own power or piety we had made him walk. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in his presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the Holy Spirit the Holy and Righteous One, and asked to have a murderer given to you, and you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses, and by faith in his name, um, in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know, and the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what, we, what he had foretold through all the prophets that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. Word, word of God, word of life. God. The second reading is from 1 John. See what, see, what you, see what love the Father has given us that we should be called children of God, and that this is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will, what we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will, we will see him as he is. And, for, and all who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little, cho little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who, has, everyone, who has, everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. Word of God, word of life. Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus himself stood among the disciples and he said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? Why do you have doubts that arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They give him a piece of broiled fish. And he took it and he ate in their presence. And then he said to them, there are, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, thus as it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations." From the beginning with Jerusalem, you are the witnesses of these things. The gospel of our Lord. 
Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Grace, peace, and mercy to you from our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. In my, in my more chrono, chronologically advanced years, <laughs> what I do in my spare time has changed from what it was 20 years ago. I've discovered in recent years that there are things called podcasts, and when I was on the road with hospice, I listened to podcasts all the time to pass the, pass the time, you know, four or 500 miles a month, you spend a fair amount of screen time in the car. There were a couple podcasts that I found that at, at the time that really just kind of, they grabbed my attention. Um, there, there's one of them that's scripted storytelling. They do their preparation, they get it all together, they put it together in this nice, neat package. And there's another one that's called, just completely unscripted, people getting up, telling their story, they have a plan in their mind and they kind of roll with it. Storytelling is one of those things that I dearly love. It always catches my attention and it always keeps me engaged. A good story is a really good thing. So humor me for a second, I'll tell you a story. When I get done, tell me if it's good or not, okay? Wow. Church in Iowa. I had been there a while. The normal Sunday morning routine, we're going through the things. Um, acolyte lit the, lit the candles behind the altar. Uh, we went through the greeting. I started to read the prayer. We got to the end of the prayer of the day, and the, one of the members of the council said, uh, Pastor, the flowers are on fire. <laughs> I thought it was the Holy Spirit in our midst, but I thought wrong on that one. Was that a good story? <laughs> How does it end? Well, I would like to say we got the fire extinguisher out, but I... I uh, I used the breath that the Lord gave me and blew it out rather quickly. <laughs> it was one of those mornings where you just didn't know what was going to happen, right? So I've often thought about a good story has uh, 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 some key parts, uh, relatable characters, um, events that you don't expect, uh, things happening and playing out in rather unique ways. Uh, there's humor. There might be uh, any other range of emotions. You know, something that pulls you in and makes the person telling the story real. I wonder what it would be like if we thought about our, our, our gospel texts a little more as a story. You see, every three years we come through this cycle or this routine of, of these stories that we know, right? You've heard this one before. I wonder what it would be like for us if we thought about this in a little more of a, a storytelling sort of way. Picturing yourself there, just like you pictured yourself seeing the flowers on fire behind me. I wonder what it would be like if we thought about our gospel texts in a little more storytelling sort of way. Or imagined ourselves into the place and Look at what we expect. Look at what we don't expect. See what catches us off guard. What might be a surprise. Today's gospel lesson is one of those that's filled with lots of surprises if we put ourselves in that place. First of all, Oh, we're jumped to the Gospel of Luke this week. Last week, we were in the Gospel of John. You know, Thomas, the guy who just wanted to be like everybody else and see Jesus in person so he could believe. Thomas, just being a real human being, he's the guy I could relate to. This week, we've jumped to the Gospel of, of Luke. And in the Gospel of Luke, if, I, if I've got my statistics right, Jesus appears six times after the resurrection to the disciples and his followers. This is one of those times, and our lesson today comes on the heels of the story of the road to Emmaus. Do you remember what that one is? That's where Jesus is walking along the road with the two men. He's talking with them. They're telling him about him. They're surprised he doesn't know anything. They don't know it's Jesus in, his, in their midst. 
They invite him in. He sits down and has a meal with them, and they came to realize it was Jesus in the breaking of the bread. This week is picking up right on the end of that story with this lesson. We've got the disciples. It's Sunday, the day of the resurrection. They're still trying to make sense out of what happened. Now, honestly, if you were there trying to make sense out of the situation, how would you struggle or what would you be wrestling with? The great teacher, the one that you followed for so many days, months, years, died a horrible death on Friday, was placed in the tomb. Sunday morning, people go to the tomb to take care of the normal prep, and the tomb is empty. To quote one of my professors in seminary, he would say, how do you think about that? Right? Kind of curious way with words, but it's really a, a great way to contemplate it. How do you think about it? How do you think about the empty tomb? It doesn't make sense in the ways of the world. And so the disciples spend the day trying to make sense out of what has taken place. And let's be honest, Luke is pretty clear on what they're doing. They just don't know what to do, right? They're lost. They can't make sense out of this empty tomb thing. The world says this is the reality. Here they are, wait a minute, this doesn't fit what the world said it would be. They're gathered together, trying to make sense out of it. I, I know if I was with them, I'd be sitting there going, um, give me some Pentecost moment, right? Fire to inspire me, because I can't make sense out of this on my own. And lo and behold, as they're waiting together, Jesus shows up, and notice his first words out of his mouth. This is really what stuck with me all week. Peace be with you. He shows up in this group and he says, peace be with you. I don't know about you, but in the midst of my life when chaos surrounds me, there is nothing more than I want than peace. Right? Some place where you can go and be and let go of the worries and the concerns Jesus shows up to the disciples and says, peace be with you. And then he names all the things that people who are wrestling with this uh, situation are wrestling with. Um, they're startled, right? They're terrified. And they look like maybe they're seeing a ghost. And he says to them, why are you frightened? Why do your doubts arise in your hearts? And then he invites them to see what's right in front of them. Look at his hands. Look at his feet. And then he showed them. And notice what Luke reminds us of. While in their joy, they were disbelieving and still wondering. That's a curious, curious tension, right? Have you ever been in a situation where you have all these emotions come up? You're going, oh, man, I don't know what to think about this situation. Imagine the 12, the disciples gathered, trying to make sense of Jesus here, but here's Good Friday, and here's the empty tomb, and none of this makes any sense to them. And then, this is the one that really catches me off guard. Hey, I'm, I'm hungry. Do you have a snack? <laughs> now, I'm trying to imagine what I would give Jesus if he says to me, in our house, yes, goldfish might be appropriate, right, Pepperidge Farm? We have plenty of those, but not broiled fish. <laughs> and they give him broiled fish, and he eats it, and they're still not trying. They still can't quite figure out what's going on, right? They still don't know the nature of who Jesus is. He's not too worried about them not figuring it out, right? Right? He continues and he starts to talk with them about what he taught them prior to his death on Good Friday. He reminds the words of the prophets. He tells them the stories found in Scripture. And then he says, John, uh, sorry, Luke says to us, 
Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. Did you catch that when I read that? Of all the things, because that's the way we say things in the world, right? All the things. Of all the things in the gospel text today, this is the one that I keep coming back to. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in the name in his name to all nations beginning from Israel. Sorry, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses to all these things. He opened their minds to understand the scriptures. What if our journey of faith every day is about our minds being opened and reopened and reopened? What if the wisdom of living with Scripture on a regular basis is each time we hear the story, there might be an opportunity to take something new and different away from it? What if Jesus is in our midst opening our minds and our hearts too. That seems to give me a whole lot of hope. I watch headlines on the news. Um, I hear of an eclipse taking place and I hear people talking about that the end of the world is near. Um, okay, I don't quite understand that. I wrestle with things that I see other people doing. I struggle in my own journey. I, I, I want to do, be faithful to my calling as a follower of Jesus. I want to proclaim a faithful message on Sunday morning as I'm juggling a full-time job in sermon preparation. Back to those words. He opened their minds to understand the scriptures. Maybe that's the nugget, the gift, the grace that finds us this week. Jesus is the one that is active in the world, in our lives, in our midst. Jesus is the one that reveals the truth to us. So our gift, our calling, our journey is to walk with him and trust that he will open our hearts and our minds to the good news that has been given to us. As we begin another week of whatever that may be, my prayer is that we all may know that Jesus is in our midst and that he is the one that opens our hearts and our minds to the truths of our faith. My prayer is that we are bold and faithful and that we trust Jesus in our midst. Let us pray. Most good and gracious God, we thank you for the gift of your son, Jesus, who reveals your love and your grace to us. Bless us in our journey of faith that we may be faithful to you and that we may boldly proclaim your love and your forgiveness with all the world. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen.
us confess, confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and our, our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. O oh God, our Holy One, you feed our deepest hungers. As we share the holy meal that is the body and blood of Jesus given for us, lead us to share all that we have and find in generosity, abundant life. God of grace, hear our prayer. O oh God, our creator, you bring forth all life on earth. Calm storms, bring water to parched places, and protect the climate that this planet would sustain life in all its variety. God of grace, hear our prayer. O oh God, our savior, you offer wisdom and guidance beyond all human knowledge. Instruct lawmakers, judges, and elected officials to make decisions grounded in your justice and care for all people. God of grace, hear our prayer. O oh God, our elder, you care for all your children. Encourage those who are in times of transition, facing the loss of old ways and routines and anticipating change. Guide those who journey in grief, hope, and uncertainty, especially those we name silently or, or spoken. God of grace. O oh God, our center, you bring all people together in you. Help us to remember our identity and purpose in our ministry. Move us to love our neighbors as ourselves and to share in beloved community. God of grace, hear our prayer. O oh God, our resting place, your son Jesus promised that we are held in your love forever. We remember our beloved who have died. As we remember and share their love, comfort those who mourn. God of grace, hear our prayer. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. Also with you, I invite you to share the peace of Christ with one another and with St. Paul online.
We want to thank you for your generosity as we want a world in which everyone can experience God's love. If you are worshiping with us on St. Paul Online, you will see our screen a number of ways in which you can contribute to support the ministries of this church and help us achieve our vision that God's love can be heard and experienced by all. Let us now continue worship with God's tithes and offerings. Please stand as you are able. Let us pray. Risen one, you call us to believe and bear fruit. May the gifts that we offer here be signs of your abiding love. Form us to be your witnesses in the world through Jesus Christ, our true vine. Amen. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread gave thanks, broke it. He gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks, gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, our Father who, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory and forever and ever. Amen. This is the table not of the church, but of the Lord. It is made ready for those who love God and for those who want to love God more. So come, you who have much faith and you who have little. You who have been here often and you who have not been here long. You who have tried to fail and you who have who have tried to follow, and you who have failed. Come, because it is the Lord who invites you. Please be seated. If you are worshiping at St. Paul Online, and you have your prepackaged communion, know that it is the body and the blood of Jesus broken and shed for you 
for the forgiveness of sins. As we gather here in person, know that our communion bread is peanut, tree nut, dairy, gluten, and soy free. This allows us all to gather into one meal, which unites us in the body of Christ. I invite the communion assistants to come forward at this time as we prepare.
Please stand as you are able. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Shepherding God, you have prepared a table before us and nourish us with your love. Send us forth from this banquet to proclaim your goodness and share the abundant mercy of Jesus, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless us now and forever. Amen. Amen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. 
Go, go experience God's love. Jesus. 